Hello and thank you for watching this screencast. My name is Andreas Tantos and in this short video I'm going to show you how to start my Cray XMP simulator after you have already started it once uh, through the install process so that you have a functional system. So in this uh, screen you see uh, the command window and I'm going to start the simulator with a configuration file and soon after starting three console windows show up these would be serial terminals attached to the mainframe's IO subsystem in, a, in the actual hardware. In here, of course, these are simulated uh, terminals. One is attached to each IO processor in the system. In this particular configuration, we have three of them, IOP0, IOP1, and IOP3. So the first thing that you will have to do is to enter a date and a time, and the system is not year 2000 compliant, so you will have to use a date before that. Let's say it's January 1st, 95, and the date, let's make it midnight. Now you are in the kernel prompt of this particular uh, IO processor, and you can get the available commands using help or uh, details on each individual command using the help and the command name. The command that we will use is start uh, and we will have to give it an image file name uh, which is cos 7 and the configuration uh, parameter file name which is dead start in our case. At this point the main frame CPU is still in reset and what this command does is that it downloads the image into the main frames memory and we'll start the CPU. So let's see how that works. Soon uh, the main CPU will come out of reset. You will see a message about that down here. You see it? And now the main frame CPU and the IO CPU have completed its linkage so they can talk to each other. So we now have a, a, a working CPU. Uh, in order to talk to the program running on the CPU, we will have to start something called a station using the station command. It brings up yet another uh, serial terminal attached to the IO processor, which is again emulated, obviously. On this prompt, we have another set of commands that we can use, and the same way as before, you can get individual help on the commands. The particular command that we will have to start with is called logon, and this command establishes uh, a session with the mainframe. So let's use that. Interesting thing is that you don't have to give any identity to that command. So now that uh, we are uh, greeted with the operating system version, the letter L appeared here on the top line showing that this is a logged on session and the letter M appeared as well showing that there are messages that require our attention from the system. To look at those messages we use the station message or st message command and the first thing that appears is a command or, or rather a message asking us if we want to make any configuration changes. We don't so we just reply to message 0 saying go and now soon another message will appear, there we go, that asks us uh, whether what we want to do with uh, BMR, BMR 020, which is the RAM disk. The problem here is that the system doesn't seem to find the label on this disk, which is not terribly surprising uh, because the RAM disk was not initialized. So what we will have to do is to reply to this message saying continue, which means that just to write the device label and continue on. So now the system can continue booting and it keeps issuing messages except that those messages don't require our attention. If you want to look at them you can use st message comma info to get the information on messages displayed. And pretty soon you will get some more and uh, pretty soon after these messages you will get the system fully booted those messages will appear on the next frame uh, onto which you can get pressing the plus key. And at this point, as you can see, the rest of the messages appeared, the last message being startup complete. 
so the system is up and operational and you can start using it. Thank you again for watching this presentation. I hope you enjoyed it.